want to ask you a question. What is the difference between an atheist who doesn't believe the Bible and doesn't do what it says and a Christian who does believe the Bible but doesn't do what it says? What really is the difference? There are both, they are both inactive, right? The atheist and the Christian might be exactly equally inactive. But guess what? The atheist has a right to be because he doesn't believe. The Christian, however, has no right to be inactive because he believes. So what's the difference? Does this describe you today? All belief and no action? To those out in the podcast or anyone in the room that, that classifies themselves as an atheist, I want to I want to talk to you, my atheist friends, and I, I use the term friend because I really want to call you that. I really want to be your friend. Uh, religion and, and whatever perception, cultural differences have pitted us against each other like enemies. I don't want us to be enemies. I want us to be friends, friends that listen to each other, even when they disagree. So often, we of the Christian belief have accused and attacked you. I'm sorry for this. I apologize. And I want to lay all my cards on the table with you right now. We have attacked you with a lot of silly accusations, actually. One is like this. Atheists have no morals. We have, we have used that to attack you. Atheists have no morals. And uh, I apologize for that attack. I think if we stopped to listen to you, we would see that that's not the case. And if we stop to think... In some ways, our atheist friends are more moral than some of us Christians. Because we Christians have professed this belief, this orthodoxy, but we haven't lived it out. Far too often we've not practiced this orthopraxy, our belief. So who's moral in that case? If that is the case, then we have no moral high ground. So we're sorry about that. Please forgive us. Furthermore, for a Christian to be militant, loud, non-listening, stone-throwing, judgmental, an accuser, all of that stuff is to deny the orthodoxy and orthopraxy of Jesus Christ. He didn't believe that way, and he certainly didn't act that way. We have taken the odd stance of proclaiming our beliefs in a way that dishonors our beliefs. And for that, we're sorry. If an atheist were to take our Bible and preach to us today, that would be really interesting. I don't know where they would take their text, so I just thought about that and I think in this situation, given what we're talking about, they would point us to James chapter 1, verse 22. Let's read what the Bible says. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Verse 27, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. We Christians, like atheists, don't apologize for our beliefs. But we should, and we do, apologize for our actions. Like James chapter 1 warned, we have looked in the word of God, 
and walked away forgetting what we look like, forgetting what our Savior looks like. For this, we at Redemption Church apologize. We will attempt to change our action, to truly match our belief in a loving God. And we will live out a belief in a loving God. And what better way to do that, our friends, than by saying we are sorry. Please accept our apology.